Hello, my name is Adam Vokte, and in this video, we're going to look at how to fight properly as the modded Therosinosaurus. Now, before we start, the mod group that made this creature may change the creature in the future, be it through them giving the creature a new ability or something like that. Furthermore, my time with the creature are limited, so if I don't cover everything, do feel free to share. In this video, we'll be going over the following topics. This is pretty self-explanatory, so let's start off right away. In the first slot, we have the extra ability that comes with three options. The first one giving the positive nor negative effects. The second option grants more defense at the cost of stamina. The third option grants more movement speed at the cost of defense. For head abilities, we have only one option, the standard bite that only does medium damage. For sense abilities, we have one option, Lone Survivor that increases armor and maneuverability when you don't have any friends. On front limb, we can equip two abilities. We get five picks and the first one is Claw Attack, a standard left-right swipe attack that does medium damage. The second option is Claw Barrage, and while the first attack may be a bit wimpy, each hit increases its power, and it can be stacked up up to five times. The Charged Claw Attack is a damage dealing attack that does damage according to how long it's being charged. On the other hand, the Charge Bleed Claw Attack is the same in principle, but rather than focusing on damage, this focuses on bleed, and it gives bleed time according to how long it's being charged. The last option here, Blockade, is a Claw Defense ability, and when activated, it will block 90% of any incoming attack for a short period of time, and I mean really short, I'm talking seconds. This is good when you fight anything big and your opponent decides to use a pesky stomp ability. It does require good timing though. For height we have three options, the first one being the standard height that gives neither positive nor negative effects. The second options are resilience that increases the resistance of bleed and venom by 50%. Then we have lightweight that increases speed at the cost of turn radius and armor. Oof. For leg abilities, we have two options, the first one Attraction, that increases turning speed at the cost of stamina recovery. Then we have Charge, basically you hail Mary in yourself forward, causing damage to anything you hit. For tail abilities, we have two options, the first one a Dust Cleaner, basically you clean off any dust from any stinky dirty dinosaur. The second ability is Back Dodge. This is really good if you're trying to bait and dodge any charge attack from your opponent. Furthermore, it can also assist you in making your movement less predictable. This can help you to get behind any enemies and tail ride them. If we're talking about an arsenal that you should use at all time, then I recommend this. Yes, I am aware that I don't have any of the charge abilities equipped, but I have already proven that abilities with faster attack rates, well, compared to attacks that need charge up and considering their cooldown, the faster attack rate deals more damage over time. Furthermore, they are less versatile and more limited. I mean, what is to stop an enemy from just running away? A creature who can't run away are tanky enough to take it, forcing you into a head-to-head -head clash. And by the way, the Terracinosaurus, it is a damage dealer, but when it comes to tankiness, well, the fluffiness shows. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose to grow, I lean towards stocky and reflecting damage subspecies. In my case, I found the reflecting damage subspecies to be rather good against low tiers and maybe mid tiers. Stocky works better against apexes, in my opinion. You don't really necessarily need the extra buff that comes from the slim subspecies and the no quill subspecies, I think they are just for appearances. When it comes to terrain compatibility, the Therosinosaurus is a rather slow herbivore. Open area with bushes and trees spread around will do just fine. 
and you probably only need those if you face faster or multiple opponents. Speaking of fast opponents, low tears. Lone low tears aren't really too much of a threat. If you have to deal with one, you just have to overpower them. Pretty simple. When facing a faster opponent, just do the classic taking a stance and try to predict their movement. Now remember, charge up abilities aren't really too useful in these situations, considering that they aren't really too discreet and your opponent only needs to take some distance. When dealing with pouncers, you can first of course try to do the water strategy, risking also being attacked by a croc, or you can let them pounce on you, and then it will be rather simple. When they pass on you, they are right in your line of fire. When dealing with mid tiers, the stats really favors you. If I had to put the theory in a tier list, then I would say either a really high class mid tier or a low class apex. They can't really face tanks by no Rexes or Gigas. When facing mid tiers, you will once again want to try and just overpower them. Force them into a head to head clash. Your damage are way more than them. On paper, you should be able to overpower them easily. Of course, the damage aren't to be underestimated either, so I would try to tail ride them as much as possible, even though you might have the stats in your favor. The Therizinosaurus might not have the best speed, and its stamina and recovery are just ass. However, its maneuverability are rather phenomenal, and it can even be made better by equipping the right abilities. Think of it like this, if you can outturn and tail ride most mid tiers, then you stand a good chance against its apexes. The Therizinosaurus might not have the tankiness of an apex, but it sure does have the damage. When fighting Apexes, you basically have to tail ride. Try to make your movement as less predictable as possible, and then slide into that sweet spot. Again, if your opponent has a stomp ability, be ready with the blockade. So to summarize, against low tiers and mid tiers, just overpower them. In the case of pouncers, actually just let them pounce on you, and when they are pounce on you, just swipe them off you. Against mid tiers, just overpower them, but don't underestimate their attack, tail ride them just to be safe. Against apexes, for the love of everything, do not face tank them, tail ride them as much as you can, and if they have a stomp, block. With that, I think I have covered everything, and if you found this video helpful, please show your support to the channel. And with that, I thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!